the entrance antiphon. Perpetual light will shine on your saints, O Lord, and life without end forever. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The peace of Christ, our risen Lord, be with each one of you. My brothers and sisters, today the red vestments, because we celebrate the feast of St. Stanislaus, a Polish bishop of the 11th century, um, very uh, uh, very conscientious that the church took care of the poor and he personally uh, helped to, to feed orphans and widows uh, because he was so revered by his people the king was jealous and had him killed that our hearts can be ready to celebrate this mass we ask God's mercy and the grace to pray well Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, in whose honor the bishop St. Stanislaus fell beneath the swords of his persecutors, grant that we may persevere strong in faith even until death. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son. He lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must, must obey God rather than that men. There, the yeah. God of our ancestors oh, raised host. Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on she a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader yes. and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put him to death the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord comforts the evildoer confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You believe in me, Tom?
Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen, but still believe. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son as giving everything over, everything over to him. Whomever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever disobeys the Son will not see life. But the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's first reading, we learn about the early experiences of the apostles who got into trouble with the authorities in Israel. Peter and John were previously jailed for preaching in Jesus' name and then released. Now all of the apostles are brought before the Sanhedrin for the same crime, preaching in Jesus' name. It's interesting to note in the gospel that the Sanhedrin don't even speak the name of Jesus. They tell the apostles, stop teaching in that name. Peter professes his faith that Jesus is whom they should be preaching about. He responds to the high priest's statement by saying, we must obey God rather than man. Peter's confidence was due in part to what we have in the gospel today, that God is indeed trustworthy. Peter's statement would have shocked the Sanhedrin. In their minds, they spoke for God and nobody else. For them, there was no higher higher power than themselves. Peter's statement causes them to change their mind. So rather than telling them just to stop preaching, they warn them that they will seek their death because of blasphemy. We are called to the same mission as the apostles, teaching about Jesus Christ. We must obey God (coughs) rather than man. When earthly powers seek to silence the message of God, we must preach it more fervently. We see the message of life silenced. We see the church's teaching on sexual morality labeled as outdated. We see many Catholics buying into the secular agenda. Jesus explains the consequences for abandoning his teaching. We read today, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but the wrath of God remains upon him. We don't need to speak in front of large groups of people. Quite frankly, most of us are are not cut from that mold anyhow. We simply need the courage to discuss our faith with our fallen away Catholic family members, our fallen away Catholic friends. It's not wrong to speak about Jesus or to explain Christian morality. In fact, it's an act of love to help someone. So in order for us to be like Peter and Paul and the apostles, we must be competent and courageous. We don't pass the faith on effectively because sometimes we really don't understand our faith. Other times, because we lack the confidence to explain what we know. Other times, we lack the courage and discipline to explain it in a friendly and non-offensive manner. And quite frankly, a lot of times, we simply don't know how. Study the faith. Study not just what the church teaches, but why she teaches. Read the catechism, listen to lectures or podcasts. What is most helpful for me, and I think probably for many of us, is to discuss the finer points of faith with each other. Many of us know the church's message, but most of us need help in organizing our thoughts. We need help explaining what we know so we can express our thoughts in a logical manner. We had this discussion yesterday in our men's group. We generally know what's right, We generally know what's wrong, but we get lost in the weeds of confusion when we make the situations we face more and more difficult. So we need help to help each other work on that. 
The apostles weren't superheroes any more than we are, as they show throughout the New Testament. They were often vain, dense, and cowardly, just like most of us. Heck, that's even just like our men's group. But in the end, they allowed Jesus to transform them, just as we must allow Jesus to transform us. So today, we pray for the grace to be more willing to stick our necks out for our beliefs. If men as ordinary as the apostles could transform themselves or allow Jesus to do so, we can also. The Lord be with you. We pray with confidence God is faithful to his promises to us. For all members of the church, may the voice of Christ be our guide and lead us to deeper faith in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern, may God grant them the humility to be guided by his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by any kind of difficulty, may Christ shine his healing light upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, may God create in each one of us a contrite spirit that is pleasing to him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they be crowned with the glory of everlasting life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the depths of our hearts, and for those whom we've been asked to pray, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, please hear us. Please answer us through your Son, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness We have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable To God, the Almighty Father. Amen. O Lord, receive this sacrifice of reconciliation and praise which we offer on this feast of St. Stanislaus so that it may lead us to obtain pardon and strengthen us in perpetual thanksgiving. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to praise you, O Lord. But in this holy season above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, 
He has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, we join the angels and saints, and together with their unending hymn of glory, we acclaim, Holy, Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate this memorial, of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may all be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walker, our Bishop, the clergy, religious, all of God's people. Remember also your servant, Thomas Olson, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Remember Thomas and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we too may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Lord's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our 
forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the power. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And may the peace of Christ be with each one of you. Let us all for each other the sign of peace. Peace, Dale. God bless you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. And his peace. Lord Jesus Christ, and the living God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, give me say. Communion antiphon. The body of Christ. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. Of but if it dies, it produces much fruit. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ, Sal. The body of Christ, Mary Jane. Marianne. The body of Christ here. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ, Sam. The body of Christ, Frank. The body of Christ, Doctor. The body of Christ, dear. Body of Christ, my friend. Body of Christ, Mary Ann. Body of Christ, Jim. Body of Christ, my dear. The body of Christ, my dear. The body of Christ, dear. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Karen, the body of Christ.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, <clears throat> we have received your heavenly gifts rejoicing on this feast of St. Stanislaus. Grant that we who have received this divine banquet and proclaim the death of your son may merit to be parter uh, may merit to be partakers with all the holy martyrs in the resurrection in the resurrection of Christ and his glory he lives and reigns forever and ever the lord be with you may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit go forth the mass is ended Thanks be to God.